Yeah, bro. I was thinking for um for episode one hundred, I was thinking topics. retrospective, not just topics, oh. but like a retrospective Top- of the entire show. Okay, you gonna you have know. to break it down. What did that mean exactly? Like not... just yeah, just uh you know we're just we're just reminiscing, right? Talking oh. about you know from the beginnings of the show, where were <laughs> we? You know what I'm saying in our lives at that point. You know what I'm saying. I feel like that'd be a good time to address the longevity of this show. And be, you know what? That's that's funny because some of my favorite episodes in TV shows is when they take a break. Yeah, you know they take a break from filming an actual episode and they just have flashbacks the whole time. And then you like, you like, dang, I totally forgot. And then you, you another thing about that too, mm-hmm. uh, a point to you to what you just said is when I see the characters in the first season, you're like, I didn't remember them being that small. Like, there was little kids at the time, and now they grown. So, yeah, no, nah, that's, yeah. Yeah, what like makes that. our show, like, cool is that you can see, like, the different eras. We don't break our episodes down in seasons. I think a lot of pods do, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. If we're going to treat our show like a show, then maybe we should do seasons too, but, like, we don't we do not do that. This is all still season one. <laughs> maybe yeah. every 100 episodes is a season. How about that? If you want, I don't whatever, know. I don't right? think it matters, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can see like the different eras throughout, like from the beginning. You know, we didn't have mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have video for the first what ten, maybe seventeen, eighteen episodes. I think our very first video episode was with was uh, with Lance, uh, with Lance, yeah, Lance and Forest, and I, think and I that had was, that, that was... weird angle where I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, what, uh, bro? I'm still, bro. I, I was hate like this, <laughs> and it was down, bro, like looking crazy. I was, it was like this, like the the phone was up there, and I was like, it looked yeah, like I, I look like I look like a what's brand name that was. You know, my precious, that's what I look like. Oh, God, freaking yeah. Golem. Yeah, I look like him. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's uh, the best way to go about it, man. And we definitely need Lance on there. We definitely need Lance on there. Mm. For those who don't know, man, Lance is with us on the Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Huge part of the team. So, you know, I think that'd be a cool little thing for episode 100. Oh. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Let's go. Wait, uh, wait, at- wait, wait, wait. We're on episode 98, though. What the bro, hell? that's what I'm saying. I know. I it's episode 100 was in the future. You no, know bro. A couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I got it marked on my calendar, bro, on the 25th. If we make it to Friday the 25th to record, that'll be episode 100. What you mean if we make it? Like I know. That's not, I know that's that's not a dark. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if we make it. Yeah. If we make it to Friday. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, welcome back to another episode of the Polytechnic Podcast, you friggin' nerds. Oh, hello, Marcus. Seth M. It's episode 98. All right. I'm a little louder today because I got the house to myself for a little bit. And uh, this is this is me 100% now. <laughs> Hear all this yelling? It's getting crazier already. So it ain't, ain't no difference. It ain't no <laughs> difference. It's going to ramp up. Uh, what the hell's going on, bro? Man, uh, episode 98 of the Poly Ticket Podcast. Y'all know what it is. If y'all want to support us directly, if y'all want to support us some more, come on down to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Poly Ticket Podcast. You get an extra episode every week for just $5 a month. Let's go. Also, the Uso Lance Falitongo of the Balinese Podcast hops on and joins us as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, come on down, throw your $5 in the hat, get some extra episodes. We have... Um, seventy something episodes also there. So if you're a new subscriber, you you get seventy episodes, just like that. Mm-hmm. So come on down, take a trip down memory lane, check us out from all those episodes in there, yeah, uh, and help support us. Also, if you want some more free content, you know, head down to Marcus's OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> uh, head down to the Fast Figure Movie Starter Kit. Don't Lance. fucking do that. <laughs> You know what? You know what clip I was watching? I was watching the one where you was you was a uh, where you was a uh, flirting with the idea of having a mukbang on OnlyFans. I wasn't flirting with the idea, motherfucker. You're the one who said to do it. You're the only one flirting with anything here, bro. If you don't knock it off, hey, don't let don't listen to this guy, bro. <laughs> you gotta listen to this guy talk, bro. He be doing that <laughs> when you was Mark. flirting with the idea. <laughs> I'm starting your only fans. <laughs> All right, so, so what? What happened? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was just watching that clip, but <clears throat> but yeah, go on down to Pacifica Movie Starter Kits. Uh, check out Lance and Marcus, Lance of the Balinese Podcast. Uh, check them out as they die. 
dissect, diagnose. I've been in the <laughs> hospital too long lately. <laughs> As they dissect uh, contemporary Pacifica movie classics or, yeah, just movies in general. Uh, I want to say the last one was like a uh, humanitarian doc or something like that. Yeah, the Forgotten Pacific, yeah. Yeah, I try to listen, and I was like, oh, "This is depressing." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I cut that book off so fast. I was like, "Bro, I'm, life is already too depressing right now. I can't it, do this." Look, man, the Forgotten Pacific is real, man. It's talking about something very real, and uh, it could happen within our generation. So we gotta, we gotta be careful, man. Start recycling more. Get it together. You know what I mean? Um, this week we're gonna try to watch uh, the Win and the Reckoning. What was that? The, I never it, even heard of that. It was uh I know shout out to Tinny man. Tinny suggested it in the chat and it's a uh it's a movie about um I think uh uh, uh what is there's a there's a village called Molokai I think and they call mm-hmm. that uh like some kind of leprosy village like if you get diagnosed with like leprosy they send you over there. And I guess this was happening a lot within like not the last 20 or 30 years but like a while back. And mm-hmm. this is kind of a, a fictional story surrounding that, so I have to I have to look at the premise again. But yeah, the Wind and the Reckoning uh, will be on for this week, and yeah, we need more movies, bro. Hey, let them know, please. We're trying to watch the mountain too. We can't find that. The mountain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, y'all should just look at the Coke on that. They got a bunch of like, you yeah, know, for real. Do that. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Uh, so yeah, head on down there, Pacifica Movie Starter Kit. Uh, I think that's all we got so far. So, yeah. without further ado, let's get to this episode. My brother, how you been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been good, bro. Last week, um, last week when we recorded, uh, I I hadn't gone yet, but you know it's been a week now. And um, yeah, I went to Comic Con last weekend. I was so jealous. Yeah, I was so jealous. <laughs> you, I wanted, was... to, I wanted to block you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy tells me to send video. I know. Like, record I, know. Like, I want to block him. You know, it's one of those things. It's one of those things where, like, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but you like you offer it up, but you hope they don't take it. Yeah, the food. Oh, That's you, usually you with food. food. You, want some, yeah. man, you want some of this? And they're like, oh, yeah, can I get half of your burger? And you're like, bro, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> now, how was it, though? How was it? It was fun, man. Um, I was texting you. I think I texted you on the last day. It was Sunday. You were mm-hmm. still you were still back home, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, I told you that, like, I had a very, uh, I had a transformative experience, man. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's some wild wording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? I don't know. It just it, I don't know. It just sounded very open. You're a very it, guarded person. So it just... come on, bro. It um yeah. It it felt like life changing. I felt like I was at somewhere where I was supposed to be, and it felt really important. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's probably somebody's like tenth con or whatever the fuck. Like there, I was probably surrounded by veterans. I was a virgin. You know what I'm saying? My very first one. And going there, it inspired me, man. Like there's there's a lot of things that I really liked, and some that I was really disappointed by. And I honestly don't know where to start, you know, as far as talking about what I saw, you know, but I mean, I seen, I seen our girl, Rosario Dawson was doing her thing. Here, here's one our thing. Gr- our girl, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> what? You don't, you don't mess with Rosario <laughs> Dawson? I mean, I do, but don't say our. Like, we're not Eskimo. I'm not saying we're Eskimo, just, yeah, brothers. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> Damn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, felt like, I felt like one of the seven dwarves when you said that. Like, it's our girl. <laughs> Um, yeah, by the way, fucking autographs and photos are expensive as shit. I didn't know you had to pay a fee to get that, bro. What you thought? It was just there for free? Well, I know it's work. I thought, you know, I didn't think the fees would be that crazy, but now it makes sense, of course. What was the fees? What was the fees? Man, they're the premier. So there was a pro package, I guess, for like more than two people to do, um, uh, to do Christopher Lloyd and uh, Michael J. Fox. That mm-hmm. shit ran for close to a thousand. I want to say like eight, nine hundred. Bro. Bro. Like, bro. I want to say something so bad. Go like, ahead. So just, bad. Just it's, freaking say it, dude. Uh, it's bad, though. Why? I'm going to say it after the pod because this is not, it's not okay. 
Nah. We'll wow. canceled. It's cancelable. Oh, I need to hear it. Is. <laughs> oh, I need to hear it. Is no comment. Um, no comment. Yeah. All right, no comment. So yeah, crazy, right? Crazy prices. So just seeing him on the main stage, the homie John Carlo Esposito was there too. He was talking on the main stage. It was good to see him on there. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where to start, man. I I went to some of these panels. I was texting you guys when I was in the panels too. Um. And like a lot of these panels were very, uh, they were great. They were great to be a part of and, and great to see, but some just fucking just, this is one of the reasons why I lit a fire under my ass, bro. So I think one of the big ones that I, I wanted to go to was uh, the one I sent you guys in the group chat, uh, AAPI, uh, representation in comics and media. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, through that entire thing, I hate to say it. I didn't see any PIs in there, you know, yeah. on the panel. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they just, you know, these guys, and I know they have, you know, they do solid work in Hollywood. One of them's a, you know, one of them is, um, he's an activist. He's a political activist, I guess, within the community. And, you know, that's all well and great, you know. But the question that was on my mind, like, was... Where's I mean, the API me... representation on the panel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like, where's the PI representation in the AAPI stuff? You know? And I was nervous, bro. I was in there. Like, I, I knew I had to ask this question and I wanted to talk about it. Like, it was just, I couldn't really focus on the panel itself because I was just so busy. Like, all right, how am I going to frame this? How am I going to word this? How am I going to say this to these fools? But then, like, so they opened it up to questions, right? So I was like, all right, cool. I'm still shaking in my boots, bro. I'm yeah. nervous as shit. Wait, I how don't... many How many people on the panel? How many people in the room? So That's there's... So there was four people on the panel. I want to say four or five people on the panel. All of them. Uh, one of them was a. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, an actress with um, uh, the Mandalorian. She's a little person. She's uh Don't. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. She's a little person. All right. And she's got credits in Hollywood. I guess she does the Mandalorian, I think, or one of the Star Wars shows. You know, they have little, credentials, little bro. Little Wookiees. The uh the Ewoks. You Ewok, about the Ewoks, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh so they all got credentials and stuff, but yeah, lack of PI representation on there. Um so they finally opened and there was about twenty people in there. Uh okay, as far as yeah, it's it's a yeah, it was a good room. It was a good showing. About twenty, yeah, like twenty twenty five. And uh, they opened it up to questions. I'm sitting there shaking in my boots, I'm nervous as shit. And then when I finally get the gumption to raise my hand and ask, bro, I'm beat to it by another another Samoan dude in there just oh. sitting in the crowd. Yeah, bro. I was like, oh, shoot. So I was like, OK, cool. So, you know, I, I didn't know what he was going to ask, obviously. So he raised his hand and they, they pick him. And then he asked, like, what do you guys what is your opinion of, you know, the supposed AAPI divide within, you know, that grouping because I'm I'm half Samoan, half Filipino. As soon as I heard half Samoan, I turned around really quick. I was like, dude, what? Huh? So um yeah, he asked him the question and then one of them uh one of them, the activist said that he's actually responsible. Uh he was responsible for uh basically creating that grouping of AAPI for mm. the government to take it seriously. And according to him, it was because of political expediency to like get these government grants and loans that'll you know help with visibility mm. but it was easier to lump us all together to uh show the government that i guess we're to be taken more seriously you know mm-hmm. because at that point you know no there was really no asian american representation in media at that time i want to say mm. early 90s you know um yeah early 90s late 80s something like that and um yeah so according to him it was just easier to just lump it lump us all together so you know the government can give us these grants and stuff so i just you know he says that and i'm just like what the fuck that fucking oh damn it this game that we got to play to to uh to do something for our peoples you know what i'm saying even with the best of intentions and that has like moved a community forward mm-hmm. has still kind of lumped another one you know, that they had to bring in uh, out of necessity, like kind of to the wayside, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah, uh, we're going to always have this discussion, this, you know, because we have AAPI uh, Heritage Month every year. So it's like, I don't know, but just to see it in person, to see mm-hmm. the lack of the PI part on that panel 
and to have the question asked by a fellow us i was like oh yeah bro like we got a long way to go but also there are a lot of steps to be taken because uh shout out to the homie jeff vicente man um he yeah he was the guy who who asked the question i had to meet him talk to him uh chopped it up a little bit with him and um i guess he runs a uh he runs a recording studio out there in north hollywood so he's okay. been in the industry for years you know and he yeah. had an industry badge i was like dude you're a guy dude what <laughs> you're a voice and shit dude so Did you, get his, you get his contact and stuff you guys connected or yeah 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 we got connected i got his uh his instagram and stuff so nice. yeah um yeah so it was cool it was cool to meet people man and again shout out to the uso scoofius who i said last week uh was going to be my mission for day one to find mm-hmm. because uh drew skid put me onto him mm-hmm. and uh luckily i found him and i bought some art from those at not those nice. crazy prices that we thought was going to be last week okay you know okay. yeah it was really good prices for some really good art i think he sold it for uh three for 50 and i bought okay. some but the Oos hooked it up nice. hooked it up you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah shout out to, uh, again to those so goofiest man it's great to see I think he was the only Samoan person with a booth over there who was just, you know, hawking his wares. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it was great to see, man. Very, you know, again, just inspiring stuff to like let me know that we belong in these spaces. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a lot of us out there, bro. And well, I mean, there's not a lot of us at the cons, but there's a lot of us nerds out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know. So there's a lot of us out there, and it's definitely possible, bro. Mm-hmm. And um, now I don't want to harp too much on Comic Con. I just had a great fucking time oh i know that's a lie i do want to harp on it bro i do, do want to harp on it do but it. I, yeah i just oh man just um I, I just need to learn to like network i guess <laughs> it's one of the things and i was a, re- a great reminder that like we gotta step our shit up bro mm-hmm. we need business cards <laughs> bro, we need business cards i got work business cards <laughs> i got oh. business cards at work like oh see but yeah no Okay. For our, yeah, for our creative stuff, we definitely need business cards, man. At that, um, there's another panel that I went to, uh, for podcasting. Who like you know, if you want to learn like the ins and outs of podcasting, which, okay, you know, great, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, I I definitely want to check that out because of what we do here. And um, over there, I had met um, I had met someone else who because I actually asked a question in this one. <laughs> I finally got the nerd to ask a question in the panel and it was finally, it was at a podcasting one. Okay. What'd you say? I you asked, subscribe um, to the party ticket now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, <laughs> and it's probably an easy softball question. Like, you know, some common sense, but I just needed, I basically needed confirmation. I said, uh, I run a couple podcasts with, uh, two homies of mine or two friends of mine. Um, we run a couple podcasts between the three of us. Our goal within the next two to three years is to create our own podcast network. Is that more beneficial? Is it more beneficial to to stay on this path or click up with a major network? And Ooh, then, that's a great question. You know, and one of them, the guy who uh, he's had his own pod is called Geekscape. It's been out for like he started in like 2005. So he's been doing this for years. He's the only one on that panel who's clicked up with a major network mm. or like, you know, a couple of times throughout his career. And he said that like the times where his posts were very corporate very catered to the network that he was with were the ones that saw the lowest drop or the highest drop in views and the ones where he just felt like he couldn't um he couldn't really get through them you know it was the ones that he liked the least or that he hated the most whichever one you want to say you know what i'm saying um so it definitely let me know that yeah we're on the right path bro he was basically telling me like yeah it's way it's way better to just um if you want to find a network you click up with a network that aligns with y'all's interests and if there Mm. isn't one that does that then you create one yourselves that you guys are doing so you guys are good i was like thanks dog we know we (laughs) out here all right so um after that after the panel was done i had met someone shout out to melissa right i think that's her name yeah melissa uh, her and her best friend Vanessa run a podcast, uh, and they're dude, they're like the antithesis of us, bro. They're women. One of them stays in SoCal, the other is from NorCal and stays up there. Mm. And they talk about issues within their community. So, well, who's their community? Uh, Filipinos, Filipino okay. Americans, women. Oh, uh, they're pop- like I told like you, the totally anti- opposite, like bro. Yeah, oh, we're way yeah. better. But yeah, shout <laughs> out to them. we're better. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, did you take them out though? Did you start did. Did homework? I didn't. Uh, I didn't listen to the show yet, but I've I followed them on their on their uh, on Instagram. Because they're women. 
<laughs> is that why you didn't listen to it? You no, it's man. Been a that's, week. It's been I, a week. I have. I know. I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, All ladies. Right, Vanessa, I'm sorry. Vanessa and Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that the um, M and the M stands for Marcus too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, yeah, I was chopping it up with Melissa, and and we was just um, just lamenting the same old stuff. You know, how do we how do we get this? How do we take our stuff to the <clears throat> to the next level? You know, mm. things like that. And I I told her I I don't I don't really know. I just told her like the premise of our show, and I think the biggest piece of advice that I I gave her was um. Oh, catered. you gave advice. Like, yeah, gave okay, advice. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, I guess the biggest thing that I told her was um, uh, uh, cater to, not cater to your people, but like, you know, uh, if you bring your stuff to your people, you know, your community, mm-hmm. then they will, they, will, uh, they will raise you up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's what I learned throughout this whole thing. I basically just told her what I learned. You know, one of the things I learned on this podcast journey is that mm-hmm. if you, if you, um, if you are uh, a part of your community, then the community will raise you up mm. and, you know, hopefully we can still, you know, keep in contact and figure things out. You know, I, I wish them the best. It's fucking hard, bro. She's just... in contact. No, nah, not really. Just since that day. Okay. But I want to, I want to learn to be more, you know, communicative. Okay. You know just, just podcast related contact. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Just all right. Cool. Yeah. Professional. Did you, did you... <laughs> business man god i can keep it in my pants dude what are you doing to me bro you know this fucking guy dude this fucking guy? bro he said he said uh uh how many waifus did you walk away with <laughs> yeah yeah how many how many <laughs> i none none zero i walked away many, with zero how many did you peep though I, I no, peaked a lot. Okay. There's, ma- was- there's there's many cheeks out there. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of cheeks hanging out there. Yeah. And uh yeah, it was yeah. That's um, why you wanted to go back a hella early the next day. I was sorry about catching the pod. I got me it opens at nine o'clock, gotta go at seven. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta wake up at six. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> it was a um, fun time, man. There was a main yeah. part where you walk in, there was a main part. Or like you know the entrance, you walk in and like there's just everybody's just fucking dressed up and shit. And I'm just sitting there like, dude, what the fuck is going on, bro? I walk in, I see, uh, I see a lot of Deadpool's, see a lot of Wolverines, of course, mm-hmm. the movie, right? Yeah. But then I seen, um, I seen Chainsaw Man. You're a Chainsaw Man, the anime, the anime, yeah, yeah, yeah complete yeah. with Chainsaw Head. That okay. shit went hard, yeah. You should have um, told them. You should have told them. Have you ever seen the Fantastic Four? I'm the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said that. You should have. It's clobbering uh, time. It's clobbering time. <laughs> you should have just said that every time you met people. <laughs> <laughs> it's clobbering time. <laughs> You're fucking stupid, bro. <laughs> So what are you supposed to be? I'm the thing. <laughs> That's the stupidest name in the world. <laughs> yeah, all right. The, the thing. thing. What, what's a better alternative to the thing? Consider his powers and what he looks like. The boulder or something. The boulder. Oh, like... I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like something, something that, that gives you a hint. Like if you see the yeah. thing on a piece of paper. Like you will never know what that is. Yeah, right. It's like the stuff. Like you yeah. got the stuff. Like there's no, there's no like indication to a power or a specialty. That that might work into your advantage though, because you're now a mystery. You don't know what that thing is. I, I mean, I guess until you see him coming down the fucking street <laughs> looking like a boulder, <laughs> then the thing doesn't make sense for that fucking guy. Yeah, and then it's just like, you know, squirrel, water gun. Then he's, yeah. dead. he's dead. He's yeah. done. He's done. Oh, uh, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so so uh, you wrote a question. You didn't bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up. Go, oh, yeah. Uh, are you cool with your girl dressing up in a sexy cosplay uh, outfit at Comic-Con? <sighs> yeah. Yeah? You cool? Yeah. Well, I, it, my answer depended on your answer, so now I know. What to say. So <laughs> why? Go ahead. why? 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 Yeah, You're going the opposite. I'm going the opposite. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, because I'm not a. What is it you wrote in here? Um, 
Dude, I, I don't want to be a. <laughs> I might have I don't want to be it, but... a good sport, or are you? I don't want to be a fragile, insecure little man. Because <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the only options. You're either a good sport or a fragile, insecure little man. If you're not cool, no, Yo, don't use my words against me. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right, so what? What? What you think? What you saying? Because I seen uh, a lot of that, bro. There was just dudes dressed up normally, and they was with their girls just. Dressed to the nines, dog. You was walking by dressed to the nines. You was you was walking by hella close. Excuse me. No, (laughs) (laughs) excuse me. Hey, 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 excuse me. It's uh, it's clobbering time. (laughs) Pardon me. (laughs) Yo, have you ever pardoned? Have you ever asked him what to pardon you? I never said. (laughs) No, 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 no. I never used the pardon. No. Maybe I should though. You start yo, bringing that back. Yo, white people love saying part of me when they get sassy. Like to like what you say? That's their what you say. Part of oh, me. Like, part of me. <laughs> pardon? Yeah, they don't even sometimes yeah. they don't add the me. There's a pardon. <laughs> hmm. That's what they get in their bag. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're angry when they just pardon say pardon me. Pardon yeah. me. <laughs> um, I would have to say I'm gonna say no, because well, first off. So are you a fragile, insecure little man? Nah, you. So look, so look. So I was thinking, right? I was thinking, yes. I was like, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. You go to Comic Con, and you know, it ain't no threats there. It ain't no threats to take your girl. You just there with a bunch of a bunch of geeks and whatnot. Let her do what she want to do. But then, if you think about it, if your girl is into that stuff enough to dress up, then she probably like that. Yeah. And then I was thinking, if I had a girl that that really dressed up and and in, in, in like Comic Con stuff, like cosplay stuff, mm-hmm. and she was with me, then that would make me a nerd too. And then I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say no because I feel like if she is the type to go for that, then she would probably look like a dude that's saying Bazinga and you know like a Sheldon type of dude, and she probably get you know she probably get the hots for him. So look, man, there, I'm, I'm just saying that there were some swole ass fools over there too. You didn't. I swear. You didn't just. I swear. There's some, be... some hot dudes there, too. Some hot dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo, that's how dudes compliment each other. They try to say everything but looks. Yeah, man, he had a nice watch. He had yeah, a nice right? Car. Yeah, they go around it. Yeah, don't <laughs> lie. Don't lie. You think he's handsome, bro? Don't lie, bro. You think he's sexy. You yeah, think he's, think he's sexy. sexy. Get the hell out of it. Yeah, man, his car. Yeah, his shoe game. Hey, that's a like, his shoe game was. Yeah, his shoe huh, game. Oh, yeah, that's point. another one. Huh? Nah, nah, nah. Hey, you hey, thought that's he was a nice sexy. car you drive, bro. That's yeah, a nice no. car you drive. You're you're moist right now, bro. <laughs> you're moist. moist right now. <laughs> you gotta. You need a towelet for down there. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's some. Yeah, there's some. You know. Yeah, there's some people over there who can steal your girl. Mm-hmm. Not my girl, but somebody girl. Yeah, somebody girl. <laughs> somebody girl. Um, so yeah, man, shout out to you. Shout out to Comic Con. Uh mm-hmm. I was jealous. I was definitely jealous. You know, I did tell you to text me. I didn't mean it, but you did. So oh, yeah. <laughs> there's that. Did they have like a Dragon Ball Z thing? Nah. They didn't texting? have that booth. Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. I mean, yeah. So there was a panel. There was a panel uh talking about grief. Oh, was, did uh, you go? I did. Yeah. How was that? Was, that? that was uh it was interesting, man. I, I thought it was cool to talk about grief through, you know, it was basically talking about grief through uh you know, through Akira Toriyama's passing, you know. Oh shoot, through uh, Toriyama's passing, and uh, oh, God bless it, bro. Like, did and, they use? Did they use like the anime episode, like like Dragon Ball Z, as a way to cope? Or so, uh, kind of in a sense, I guess. Uh, nah, I don't know how to explain it because I'm also getting flustered with this fucking camera, bro. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so they, uh, oh, everybody on that panel, they were all, like, certified doctors and, like, psychiatrists and stuff, and they were basically just talking about, like, um, how we deal with grief, you know, just in general, but through the lens of Akira Toriyama's passing, you know, it's Comic-Con, and uh, I think Yoane has said something in the note, too, about uh, his last, um, his last written story that's about to premiere soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Yeah. yeah, there's, you know. 
of course, there's a lot of love for Akira Toriyama in the community. So um, to see to see certified like psychiatrists talking about grief uh, in that way through that lens was was, you know, it was sad. But it was also like the biggest thing was, is that this person still lives on through their work, you know, long after they're gone. So it's uh, it was one of those, you mm-hmm. know, they're just basically talking about the stages of grief. There's one thing I learned where the one of them said that, uh, you know, people keep talking about the five stages of grief or, you know, the five, you know, the five stages, but there's actually more stages and it's not linear, you know, mm-hmm. and I thought that was a really interesting point. Because it's like when we think of that, we only just think of, you know, the five stages and just happening one after another. It doesn't happen yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. Everybody's one so day I, different. Exactly. You know? Everybody's too different to, to follow too close to the script like that. So it's not it's not true. So I <clears> thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah, there was just a whole bunch of freaking nerds everywhere, like just, you know, in, in our collective sadness in that room, you know? Did you cry? Did you cry? No, no, I didn't cry. Okay. okay. I didn't cry. But so it wasn't that good then. It yeah, wasn't that good. it wasn't that good if I didn't. Cry. Honestly, it wasn't that good. I would have been up there making everybody cry. <laughs> yeah, that's your goal. That's my goal. That's that's the only like barometer. You know, that's the only way you can quantify how good your panel is, especially, especially if it's about grief. Yeah, we need we don't need dry eyes in the room. That's Not true. at all. But we also <clears> don't need wet eyes in the gr- in the room too. You talk well, about this stuff without crying. Well, they had wet thighs when the guys were looking at other people, you know. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Shout out to Comic Con. I can't. To- I can't talk about shit with this guy, bro. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, man. Shout out to Comic Con, bro. Yeah. So, uh, while Marcus was out there enjoying himself, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get let's get ready to bring it back down. <laughs> Let's start getting some fucking t- teary eyes hey, right now. Speaking of grief. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on, brother? What happened? Uh, So, yeah, I went back home. I went back home for a funeral, for my uncle's funeral. Yeah. Uh, I think I left Saturday night, got there Sunday morning. So I was there from S- Sunday, Monday, and then I left Tuesday. So it was a real quick trip. Yeah. Um, I don't like traveling no more, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm like it's so. I don't know. It's just. Ugh. I was so tired the whole time. Got out there. I was tired. Took a nap. And then we went to the service. I was tired. Uh. <clears throat> but yeah, man. Samoan funerals. It's like. It. I don't know. It's it's such a it's such a familiar feeling. Mm-hmm. I felt like a kid again. Like I always feel like a kid when I'm in church or when, I, when you know, like those kind of scenarios, mm-hmm. I'll be forgetting I'm 32. Like we get in there and you got your aunties there, and your mom's next to you and just family all around. And, and it just, it just takes me right back to when I was a little kid going to church and, and going to the funeral services as a kid. Um, Yeah. Like they, uh, I wrote some stuff. I wrote some stuff. <clears throat> um, Oh, I, this is just the hater stuff that I wrote. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, wait, funeral service. Oh, the the idea of overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't hating on the funeral, but it was just the things we was thinking about. Do we had to change? We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I said there's a sense of community that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, when it mm-hmm. comes to like either being with family or being at home or being with church, and that was so true, man, bro. I'm going to keep saying it. I know we said it last time, but I'll be ready to cry. Well, I, I was emotional. I was crying the whole time during the service anyway, but I'll be like ready to cry when it's somebody up there that gives a testimony. And at the end of their testimony, they start singing and they can't really sing. But then the whole church the whole congregation joins in mm-hmm. and everybody like, first of all, for everybody to know the same songs, that's just, that's just a, a feat of community in itself. And that's a testament to the community in itself for all Samoans to just know every Samoan song, you know, mm-hmm. and then for everybody to just, cause I don't know if other cultures do that to where if somebody's up there performing, you just feel entitled to jump in. Like, I don't know if other people do that because I feel like that would be a rude thing. 
Like someone's up there performing and struggling and you just start backing them up. It's like, bro, this is a solo. Get the hell up, you know? Yeah, if it's just one person <laughs> just backing them up. Yeah. Like if, the, if the entire church comes in, then yeah, I think, yeah. You know, I, that probably happens more than we think, man. In other cultures? Maybe, yeah. I can't I see it. it. Mm. I can't see it because I know, especially in Western culture, everything is so individualistic. Mm. There's not much sense of community or there's not like a lot of communal living when it comes to Western society. Mm-hmm. So I can't see that being the case. Okay. And so I put more, I put more on it. Like I, I, I value that more. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, you know, that part, um, I just love it. I just love being a part of it. I love seeing it. I love being, you know, around to witness it. So that, that was dope. Um, and then, you know, first of all, mom, I'm sorry, man. Rest in peace to my uncle Fushi, Fushi Masasalo. Mm-hmm. Um, man, that dude, bro, he was a real one. Uh, I was I was thinking, that, bro, this is how you know I'm getting old, because I was thinking about going up there. Like, when it was like, hey, if you guys want to, I was thinking about going up, but I had a whole full row, and I wasn't trying to walk through everybody. Uh, my, <laughs> my my pops wasn't able to be there. And so I was, I, I, I kind of wanted to go up, because I knew my dad, if my dad was there, he would have went up. And, but I didn't. But if I were to go up there, I would have just emphasized the fact that I never, I don't remember a time where my Uncle Fusi came around for something. Mm. Like he never came around asking for anything. Every time we seen him, it was either to check up on my pops or it was like family stuff that he was coming in to check in and seeing what we needed. Mm. But like, as far as like, <clears throat> Coming over, say, hey, can you help? Or, hey, can we, you know, we need some assistance with this. Or, hey, we need y'all help with this. We need, it was never that. I've never seen that in my whole life. So I, I think that's a testament because, you know, Samoan people, we love asking for help. We love <clears throat> pulling up, some hopping the us, car. Yeah. Well, yeah. Most of us, yeah. Most of us like asking for help, yeah. The the auntie will pop in and be like, we need help moving. And just all the kids just hop in yeah. the car. Now, now you're moving furniture for some, for some hamburger helper and rice. <laughs> You know, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, the, you know, that was one thing that I really took away. The service was, was beautiful, bro. The kids, the kids' testimonies. Mm. Holy crap, bro! I was, I was thinking to myself, I was like, yo, these kids is. I I was never this in tune with my emotions as that at that young age. Yeah, I'm noticing that a lot too, bro. Like, yeah, these 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 younger kids are a lot more. Uh, they know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, they know like, what's going on more within themselves I, even better than even, we did even at my auntie life you know i remember uh my little cousin uh she the, the granddaughter she, she did a uh, speech and i was blown away and then this time uh poopa which was he's in the seventh grade mm. bro his thing sounded i literally had to ask him hey bro did you write that or was that chat gpt because that was a lot of big work <laughs> and he was like no i was like how long did it take you to write and he said two weeks and i was just blown away bro mm. Like his, all of the kids' speeches, but his speech and then one of the girls' speeches, uh, just uh, to just be that emotionally intelligent, but also to be able to articulate it in the ways that they did. Like the girl, her hers was more like poetic. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, when I, what'd she say? I think she said, when I see the brown in the leaves during fall, I'll think of your eyes. And when I feel the warmth from the sun in the summer, I'll think of your hugs or something like that. Oh, like, bro. Jesus I, bro, Christ, bro. I'm telling you, when I was crying, I was crying. I was like, you know, it was it was bad. And the kids, yeah. I, 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 even afterward, I was like, y'all got one more time. Make me cry up in this mug, bro. Like yeah. everybody <laughs> made me, you know, uh, and Poopa, his, his was like, it was just like, I, he said something like, I am forever indebted and and uh if forever indebted into uh, indebted to you for imparting such wisdom upon my life and I was just like, yo, God, what? bro, he's in seventh grade, and I was like, so I started chopping it up when it like that's one thing too, like you know the kids you don't really hear from them a lot during mm-hmm. regular you know they kind of quiet they kind of sit in the corner do what they, but then today or at the funeral I got to see them like who they are and i was just like hey man what books do you read oh. i start chopping it up with what books he reads and and what he likes and what he's into and it was just i was like that's little seth that's literally little seth he was like yeah i'm reading the hunger games i like my favorite book is the hate you give and i'm like you talking about the movie he was like yeah but it was a book first and i was like i didn't even know that <laughs> and so, 
Yeah. You know, I had to ask him about Harry Potter, and he said he was bored. He was bored of Harry Potter. He, he you know, I kind of get him out of here. Get him. Yeah, out of I was kind of beefing. Get him out of here. I was kind of beefing with him a little bit. Said, get him out of here. Like, like later on in the night, I said, "So, what would it take for you to try Harry Potter again?" <laughs> It would have to be less boring. I was like, all right. All oh, right. Jesus. That's enough. That's oh, enough. That's my enough. God. Yeah. That's enough. We about yeah, to fight. Sorry. About to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going a little too hard right now, bud. Get out of my face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, man, uh, the funeral was, you know, it was beautiful. I'm glad I, got, I was able to make it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Unc got sent off right. And it was, yeah. You know, and it was a bunch of family I haven't seen in forever. Mm-hmm. Like two of the homies that I grew up. They was around when I grew up. They was from Wilmington. Uh, they was from Wilmington, not Seleka, but they like from they from Compton, or one is mm. from Compton, another one from like Tracy or something. But uh, when I seen them, bro, like it was just a flash from the past. Yeah. Like and and one of the homies too, like I had met him in Seattle a couple years ago, and he was like, "Hey, hey, bro, you you meet Seth?" And he looked like, "Man, what you mean if I meet? I don't know Seth. I know that." He's like, that's how I, that, I mean, I'm in the family. I know that. And so so he was like, oh, shoot, I didn't even know you knew Seth. And then he's like, bro, what you mean? I, so so it was it was it was lovely to see old family members, man, like like church family. Like, it was all the old church family, like, you know, from from the church that I went to and the Mafagangas, they used to come up, you know. Uh, So it was yeah, it was good, man. Yeah, it was you, it was a good time. Yeah. When did you get back? I got back Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Mm. So yeah, Monday night. Well, Monday was the last service, and uh, they cremated him. And then that Monday night, I just uh, I was with my my pops was, was in the hospital. He, he's doing good mm. now, and he's about to get out today, I think. Yeah. And so we was there the whole night, and then I got home and stayed up that whole night, and I flew out at four in the morning. And mm. so, yeah, <clears throat> back to work on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, one thing, one thing that that uh that that came up from the funeral though. Uh, and I got to give credit to my mom because she's the one that said it. Uh, but at the end, you know, we were all kicking it after the funeral. Uh, one of the homies, he was, uh, you, you know, they was driving back to Compton or they was, dri- you know, they wasn't going home until tomorrow. They were given like four big boxes of chicken, you know, at the end of everything. Mm-hmm. And he was basically trying, hey, man, who live in Sack? Y'all take this because I can't. It's not it's going to be bad by the time we you know, drive back home. And so my mom was bringing it up. She said, you know, they need to make the gifts more practical. Mm. It needs to be more practical because this type of stuff and the even the the e uh, what is it? The pongas like mm. it, it it's they have use for them in Samoa and they have use for them in other ways, like other places. But like as far as America, there's certain things that we do that just it doesn't it, it's not practical for the life that we live in America, you know? Mm-hmm. So instead of a, some cases of chicken, send the envelope and let's just be done with it. You know, yeah. it's a lot less hassle. The kids don't got to move back and forth. You know, they don't have to run around with the cases of chicken. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of it's yeah, just like overall. And it, and it got me thinking, like, what are some other, what are some other things that we could update? And who does the up? Who who determines the updating? Like who who started the money throwing? Like who did that first, and we just all went along with it. Um, I don't know. I I always, <laughs> I always want to um, like reference Kanana Fo as like the start of everything, just because that's where all the pastors come from, and I think a lot of our rules extend from them, even though that's that's wrong, right? That's one hundred percent wrong. But I don't know why I have that mindset about these fucking pastors who I think are like the gatekeepers to our culture. So you I think everything like everything starts with Kanana Fo? Like they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're the end all be all. They're the end all be all. I know <laughs> that's not right, but that's just how I I don't know. That's how I think, man. So when we talk about who's uh who who do we talk to to change these traditions, let's talk to those fucking hacks over there <laughs> at Kanana Fo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's not true. I don't know who to talk. I don't know, man. Do we talk to our government? Who do we talk to? Yeah, if like not if not Kanana Fo. <laughs> if not Kanana fault, dude, then who? Where's Ja? Yeah, where's Ja? Get ja real, where's Ja, dude? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, bro. it's it's know. funny though because like I'm thinking about it, and who who decided be super? Like, like who decided these things? And we just went like you, uh, you know, when everybody came out with that whole you're not supposed to dive in front of the, in the top pole when she's doing her dance. You seen that? Really? Right? Yeah, they said I that's that not was standard. Oh, that's, what? That's not tradition. That's oh, that's, that's made up. And 
typically you are not supposed to be close to her at all. It doesn't matter if you're on the floor and whatever. Uh, I've heard this from like some reputable sources as well, like some some real cultural type people. And I don't know why, but I feel like outside of like American wedding, you know, like if it's back in this back in back home in Samoa, I don't see it as much anymore because people were speaking out saying like that's not traditional. Mm. And so I just want to know who started it for other people to take it on and just think that it because it, like what you just said. I I've seen it so much in my life that I thought it was customary, but apparently it's not. Mm. So do we just bluff? I guess you just, just, you just do it. Yeah. You just know, whatever you it. want to change, just start it. And then once it starts, because man, that shit will reach bro. Yeah. And now with Facebook, yeah. everybody's going to bitch about it. Yeah. And people are going to see that. And they're like, wait, they did that. Over the week. We can do that. And then they might try it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it'll just start a chain. It'll be a hater chain and people will love it. And then they started, <laughs> then more haters, more haters, more haters, probably from Kanana Fo. Fuck them. <laughs> hey, you know what be crazy? You know be crazy, right? Since what? now everything is digital. And so, like what you just said, you got haters, you got lovers, and and you you know, whatever outweighs the other side, whatever overtakes the other side, mm-hmm. you kind of you kind of set the rule, you set the standard. The masses yeah. set the standard, you know. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you start a trend. And you buy bots to agree with you on Facebook. And then people just see a million comments saying, hey, that's awesome. And then they just go with it. So that's we can that's, like, bro, we can low key check, bro. You can rig it, bro. You can rig it. You can rig. You can rig it, bro. Yeah. Imagine if we did that, bro. You can rig the culture. Holy fuck. Ain't that crazy? That's what yeah. I'll be thinking. I'll be thinking stuff like that. I'm freaking demented. <laughs> yeah. You're a nutcase, bro. Hell yeah. Um, fuck yeah, let's just start it. Let's just ring yeah. it. Yeah, just start it. it. So, what what would you want to change? You said everything that isn't practical. So, no follows, no mats, yeah. no fine mats. Yeah. Um, no no cases of soup on chicken. I mean, oh, bro, no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I like how it no, changes the food. No, hey, I'm, he doesn't hey. want to take the mats, but he'll no, take no, the no. food. He's no, just no, like. No. Okay, the food no, serves. What are you gonna do with that? Case okay, chicken, look, bro. the mats in American living it, it doesn't serve too much of a purpose i know culturally it does mm-hmm. when you live in america all it does is you need to find space for it for the next poly you know the next function mm-hmm. um but the food serves a purpose we still eat food mm-hmm. and i don't think the, the frozen cases of chicken i don't know about that because it's such a hassle to carry around but i mean the case of soup, that stuff don't go bad yeah the cases of tuna that stuff don't go bad so like I don't see nothing wrong with that. I think that's still practical, you know, but yeah. Why am I thinking like in place of a dowry, right? Like people would like, you know, use cows as like a dowry for like marriage. That's why we use like be soup or corned beef in place of the cow. cow. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if, if they would have even been inspired by, oh, this dowry because they didn't have cows like that back then. So I don't even think they needed to replace anything. Like, I can't imagine them saying, oh, you know, those Indians or I don't know who who does it that gives out cows. And they're like, this will be our version because I don't think they knew about it. Yeah. You know? I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I kind of got that from Johnny Lingo. Johnny Lingo was one of the richest people in the Pacific because he had cows. Right. Was it Johnny Lingo? Uh-huh. Oh, no. I'm th- No, that's not Johnny Lingo. It, well, Johnny Lingo did have cows. But I'm thinking of... um. <laughs> The one, the movie with Mahana. Why the fuck am I forgetting about it right now? Uh, it was Johnny Lingo. I'm tripping. It was Johnny Lingo. And you yeah. getting old, bro. I'm getting old as <laughs> shit, bro. And we covered that movie on the damn starter kit. Holy fuck. It's I'm remembering old. time. It's remembering time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, bro. Um, Yeah, nah. I don't know, man. Yeah, Tradition. I don't either. Tradition. Tradition is one hell of a thing. One, of. yeah, one, one. Come on. Uh, uh, so one of our <laughs> one of our traditions. This is just a weird one of our cultures. One of our traditions in our culture uh, is a tattoo, right? Yeah, it's a tattoo. And uh, you know, if you're familiar, then you would know. And if not, you know, the malu is worn by the women of our culture, and it is, you know, it 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 kind of elevates your status a little bit. Like when you get a malu, it, it's looked at like oh she knows a little like you have to get approved 
You yeah. have to get a blessing from your family. You have to get. A, you have to have a consultation with the uh, Tufunga with the the tattoo artist. Yeah. And there's steps that go into it outside of hey, I want to get this, and you just sit down. You know, there's yeah. there's it's a process. Mm-hmm. It's um, that is like you know, it it's like represents like grace, elegance. You know, what I'm yeah. saying knowledge of culture, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, one of the big uh news uh pieces this week a uh, girl was seen dancing at a neo concert in New Zealand with Amalu um she was on stage she was dancing and she was dancing not so gracefully uh she was twerking on neo you know i, I, I want to say she gave him a kiss um but yeah it was it was a lot uh and she had short shorts on and the Malu was showing and so I think this also goes into the conversation of should this be one of the updates in the culture? You know, a lot of people were upset. A lot of people were upset that she had the Malu and she was showing it off so disgracefully. Mm-hmm. And then there was also other people who were just like, yo, she's young. Let her live her life. She ain't yeah. doing nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you what do you think? What's your take on it? Nine times out of ten, I would have been with that camp, that let her live camp, you know what I'm saying? Let her do her thing camp. But because like now that I'm thinking about it, like people getting the Malu nowadays aren't even do- doing it like traditionally anymore. Mm-hmm. The Song Miki, you know what I'm saying? Or, or the Song Miki, like people aren't going in pairs. You know what I'm saying? They're not getting it in Samoa. People outside of the culture are getting it. So like the the like, tr- I don't know. It feels like tradition is slowly not phasing out, but just definitely updating and evolving for current times, you know? With yeah. the way things like the way people think nowadays, as far as like you know, um, freedom to be yourself, you know, type shit. You know what I'm saying? In in lieu of culture, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And um, I don't know, but now it's like, and maybe this is my dumb male brain, but like I just don't want. Yeah, I wouldn't want you know a woman with the Malu up, you know, on stage doing what she's doing with that showing, and that's not. I don't think that's fair. You know, that's definitely not fair of me <clears> to say. You know, because I'm not a woman. I'm a dumb man. And she's the one with the Malu doing her thing. But mm-hmm. you also mentioned something uh, uh, before we started recording about her, which makes it kind of even crazier. You oh, yeah. They said they said uh, there there were tweets. I don't know, because we couldn't find I couldn't find it. There was no real article. It was just all gossip on social media. <laughs> but there was tweets saying that she was 17 as well. And yeah. So so that plays a part, too. It's like, yeah. I mean, she, I. I it's all speculation, but if she's underage and she shouldn't have been there, then yeah, that's all on her. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, uh, I, I mean, at, at, at that point, I feel like the, the discussion of the Malu becomes irrelevant. If she's underage and she's not supposed to be up there or yeah. not supposed to be there at all, like the discussion of the Malu shouldn't even be a thing. But I guess it is because she was on stage, you know, showing it off. But yeah. I don't know. Something more important came up, like the fact that they let an underage girl in there and twerk yeah. on stage on Neo. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I'm stuck in between the two, you know? Like our generation, the elder millennials was like the ones right before all this crazy cultural change. You know what I'm saying? We was there mm-hmm. for the outset of the internet, um, social media, things like that. So when we see, like, when we see, I feel like when we see change, like we're a lot more open to, you know, you know, we're a lot more open to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, baby boomers, Gen X are a little put off and hesitant, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, man, but when, I, I don't know, well, like when it affects our culture specifically, I'm just like, keep up with tradition, but what even is tradition anymore in 2024? Yeah. Like I'm stuck <laughs> in between the two, man. So what do you think? It's, I feel like I feel like we we've had this conversation plenty of times, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna just reiterate the talking point. It, it you either you either keep it pure and let it die, or or you taint it a little bit and you let it live. And so what I mean by that is, you know, we could we could draw a line in the sand right now and say, if you don't want to live the life that you should be living under the rules or guise of this malu then don't get it Mm. you know and even you know it even goes to the tufunga like if it's not the correct way to give it out then don't give it out and i feel like if if we were to draw that line and if we stayed true to that line less and less people would get it you know so that means less and less tufungas would learn it because it wouldn't be a profitable business 
like for you to go through all that training to know how to do it, to not give any out, it would kind of lead the two fungus in a position where it's like, well, I could go train here <clears throat> and learn this, this technique that will happen once a year, or I could just, you know, work for six, seven, you know, six weeks and make the money and not have to go through this apprenticeship and waste and not waste his time, but, but use up all that time for a thing that I'm not going to use period. You know, I'm going to use it like infrequently. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you want. And so if you want to keep it pure and you want to let it go away, that's fine. You know, let that be, let that be the, the, the hill that you die on. And if you, if you're okay with it, you know, being tainted and, and, and being, you know, uh, a, a mixed version of what you are used to, as long as it can still, you know, go on, <clears throat> that's fine too. It just depends on which, where you stand. And I feel like for me, I'm like, and and I hate that you went first because now you kind of pointed out that is it is, it does come off as a little sexist because in the culture it definitely is sexist. But I don't like I don't see why you would get it if you don't want to live that. Like right. I don't understand. Like what if she was pressured by her family to get it? Then I understand. Mm -hmm. But like if it's your personal choice, right? And you know everything that comes with it. And and also like my version of what it comes with could be incorrect because I'm not too, you know, I'm not too in the culture like that, but I kind of, I think I got the premise of it. And I feel like if, if I got the premise of it, somebody who's so far removed, I feel like other people already know what comes with it or what's expected to come with it. If you could, if you know that and you're like, mm, especially if you 17, yeah, like, if you know you want to live life and you know you don't want to uphold these standards and traditions and customs and all that, yeah, I don't see, don't I don't see why, what's the pressure to get it? Yeah. Like, I don't understand that. I've never, you know, like even for me, like, to, you know, <clears throat> I understand the Malu and the Songai Miki are like separate and there's a lot more that goes into it for the males, but I just don't understand that pressure of like, Oh, I got to get a Malu. I got to get a Malu. Like, yeah. I don't, like, you know, if you doing for hours at the funeral with or without the Malu, I, I don't understand the difference of it. So I don't understand why they feel inclined to get it if they know, like, now nah, I'm going to I'm gonna be turning up, like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I just don't get it. And so it, it, it ultimately boils down to me feeling like people feel like it's just a thing and not really, not really uh, taking into account everything else that comes with it. It's just, it's just a thing. You get it, show mm -hmm. it off, you post about it on social media and you just go about your life. And I think that is the part where that we need to kind of reclaim and be like, nah, this is like a lot. Like you going to have to shut down the fun for a little bit or, or have fun in jeans. <laughs> you can have fun in bell bottoms for the rest of your life. You know, like, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that type of stuff should be reiterated. That type of stuff should be, you know, it should be focused on and emphasized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. 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 I'm inclined to agree with you, man. Uh, she had to have known that this was going to cause a stir, bro. She had to have known. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, like, you turning up at the club with short shorts and the Malu showing, that's one thing. But you hop on stage with Neo. Come on. In short shorts. I, it's too, it's too many there's too many mis uh, moving pieces in this equation for me to feel like it was a, it was a happy accident or right. it was just, you know, yeah. ah, coincidentally, I was dancing on stage with Neil and the whole world saw it. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. I don't know why they're mad at me, dude. It's kind of <laughs> crazy. I was just on there dancing on Neo, dude. Yeah. Like uh, it's a certain, there's a certain type of arrogance that comes with that. And, or, or just a certain type of contrarianism where it's just like, you know what? I know I'm supposed to do this, but guess what? I'm going to be on stage with it. So I don't know. I don't know the thought process. I hope, hopefully she came out and talked about it. Uh, there was a, there was a comment too that said, apparently her dad is a pastor. So. Yo, you know what they say about them PKs, bro? You was a PK, right? Uh, uh, ah! does it count? It doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. He didn't have a church. My dad didn't have a church. Nah, was he, he a didn't have a church? Was he a pastor? He was, but he didn't have a church yet. Were you a kid? He was graduated. He, he graduated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you know what they say about them PKs without no churches? <laughs> 
Yeah, pops be moving around church to church, kids be hoeing around community to community, school to school. So <laughs> you just busted yourself out, brother. No, I didn't. You're just adding too much that isn't there. I'm just saying. No, you're not. You're are not you saying a- anything. You're are you- shut <laughs> up. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Shut the hell up. Marcus is a PK, brother. It's not yeah. porn king. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. So, fuck. So, should she be reprimanded? That's yeah, she should. Yeah, let us know. What do y'all think? Are we tripping? Are we old and outdated? Should yeah. we let the kids be kids, or do we have a point? Slam! Da 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 da. Let, the, let kids the kids be kids. Be kids. <laughs> speaking speaking of music, uh, real quick before we go, uh, I was on. T- shout out to Tashi One K. I was in the stream, Stack Bundle stream, with him and Kalemi. Uh, last night listening to music and I kind of I kind of sparked a conversation in there uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, music being played a lot of artists up and come artists mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was a lot of sampling going on but the sampling with poly artists yeah I wrote in there I hope I hope everybody who's sampling a poly artist is getting cleared because that's something that I don't do personally yeah you know I because Let's be real. If you sample without clearing, if you, of, I don't know if people know what sampling is. So just uh, for those of y'all that don't right know, sa- sampling is when you take a song, like an already established song, and you have a producer take it, play with it, you know, interpolate, whatever you call it, and speed it up, slow it down. You change it into another kind of beat or sound or feeling, but it's still essentially the baseline of everything is that song. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> Usually when you do that, you have to get the approval of the artist or the production company or the management to use that song. And then you guys kind of negotiate rights, negotiate splits and percentages. So even though it's your song and you make money off of it, they make a percentage of it because that's just what you owe them for using their song. Um, There was a lot of poly artists on there who were sampling like Fiji and, you know, like all these other poly artists. And I was like, I hope they get it cleared because at the end of the day, sampling is without clearance is basically stealing. And I would not be okay with stealing from my own people. Um, have you ever thought of this? And what do you think of it? Uh, yeah, I have. Um, th- th- so, well, before I get into that, didn't you have like, uh, you, you used to do songs, right? You used mm-hmm. to do songs back in sound, uh, like on your SoundClouds and stuff where it, where it sampled a lot of these. Just the difference is nobody was getting paid. No, yeah, nobody I, was getting paid for it. I, I wasn't really sampling. I literally was just looping the beats. Yeah. And I was just using the beats. And I, I feel like that's even worse than sampling because you, you don't put any... <laughs> you yeah, don't you put, put you know, <laughs> you know, your own spin on it, huh? It's yeah. literally just the same thing. <laughs> you, hey, hey, real quick, real quick. Uh, 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 damn, what's his name? Uh, he was he was with... Uh, he was with... He was, he was with uh, Dallas and them. And he had that song, Best Friend. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, but he had another name though. It was like Isaiah or something like that. Isaiah, yeah, something like the yeah, Psalm one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did that song, Best Friend, because you mm-hmm. know they was coming out with videos, and so I sample, I, I, you know, I loop the end and I rapped on it. And he told me years later that he hella hated that. <laughs> <laughs> he told me years later he's like, bro, it was so bad. It was like somebody stole my baby and just <laughs> took off with it. And he was like, and it was dope. It was good, but I, I, it felt bad. And then I didn't feel like that until somebody kind of did it to me. Mm. And I get it. I get it. So my bad. So, yeah. It's, so. so it's, I bring that up to say that, you know, our conversations about that has like, you know, <laughs> opened my eyes to it because, you know, I, I mean, I, I rap sometimes, I make some music, you know, and I hear a lot of beats that sample a lot of poly artists. And I, I like the first thought in my mind is, have has that been cleared? Yeah. And if I use this, Will we get in trouble? And will they like not get paid for it? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's like, it, it's just it's easier to steer clear of that. You know. So I'm I'm um I'm in the same boat with you. I'd much rather uh, be on a song that has been cleared. You know, from everybody involved. You know, down to the beat that was sampled. Everyone involved. Um, uh, uh to make it. You know, to to make the stuff. I'd yeah. rather be on something that's been cleared. You know. So, yeah, right there with you, bro. I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not okay with it either. I love the fucking beats though, bro. 
Bro, These beats are so fucking hard. That's the thing. They're so good. And it, get and them it, cleared, bro. Get them cleared so you can put it out, please. Because these are so fucking good, bro. Yeah, and just a heads up for anybody listening who makes music or wants to make music. If you mm-hmm. buy a beat that has a sample, it is on the artist to clear it, not the producer. Mm. Yeah, producers don't have to clear the sale, apparently. Mm. Because they're oh, selling. Damn. like It's like a person to per, uh, It's like, you know, person to person sale. Okay. If you if you go through like the streaming and all that, all of that stuff is regulated. Mm. So once you once you get into that regulated territory, you as the person who's putting it on the regulated territory, like streaming platforms, radio platforms, YouTube, where they you know you start monetizing. Like once it goes there, everybody involved needs their cut. When it mm. goes from person to person, like they can't regulate that because there's no there's no universal place. To regulate, you could okay. buy it off B stars. You could buy it at the studio when you go to the studio. You can okay, buy it off okay, YouTube. Okay. You can oh, buy right. it there's YouTube. no, there's not one marketplace that everybody goes to, so it's yeah. not really like regulated. If, like if Beat okay. Stars became the premier platform for everyone to go to get your beats, okay, they would then contact Beat Stars and they would then regulate it through Beat Stars. Okay, but there since you go. there's so much. You know, you can't get on the radio without getting approval from the broadcast stations around whatever area you're in. You can't get on the streaming platforms unless you go through a distributor who then has to talk to all of these people around. So it's easier for them to regulate as the artist as opposed to the producer who's just selling person to person. Mm-hmm. And that changes that changes when and so I'm sorry, yo, this is super like <laughs> artist level. Yeah, that this changes is very nerdy <clears throat> ass shit you're talking that, about here. That that aspect changes once you start controlling where you distribute your music. If everybody has to come directly to you, if you build your own platform mm. and they don't have to go to Apple or Spotify or YouTube or Tidal or whatever, if they have to come directly to you, now, now it's a little harder for them to regulate. Now mm. it becomes a totally different situation. If it becomes person to person, like you, you know, direct to consumer. Now you got a little more action. You got a little more wiggle room. So mm. something to think about. Yeah, something to think about. Yo. Aspiring artists. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, no, no sampling our own. I, I I um I made an analogy. I was like, you know, stealing from from mainstream artists is like stealing from Walmart. And stealing from poly artists is like stealing from mom and pop stores. You mm. don't do it. You just don't do it. You don't steal from people in your community. Go and steal from Walmart. Go and steal from Costco. Go and steal from Winko. You know what I'm saying? But don't do it. Target. Steal from Target. Yeah, steal. steal from the, steal from Target. Nah, not if Marcus is on the job. Not if Marcus is on the job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Once I'm out of there, steal from Target. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out, to, shout out to everybody trying to make music and trying to make it, man. You know, we see y'all, man. We, you know, do it. Yeah. Make music. Make music. Make music. Okay, man. <laughs> Okay, I will. Yeah, three days off now. Make music. I know, dude. <laughs> you know what? You're right, bro. Hey, hey, You're fucking right, bro. I'm never I wrong. I love it too. I love it yeah. too. Right. Uh, other than that, though, man, I think I think we good, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate uh for anybody on the Patreon, man. Sorry, sorry about last week. You know, we we had some we had some things in real life, but you know, we back. So we gonna, we gonna take care of y'all tomorrow. Yeah. If you're not part of the Patreon, you're missing out. Come on down. Patreon.com slash the party taking podcast. Oh. Subscribe. Come yeah. on in. Support us and support yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh that's it though. How about you, brother? If not, you can take us out, man. Yeah, man. Ditto. All of that. Same old stuff, man. Um, yeah, hit us up. You know where to hit us up at now, you know. Um, <laughs> talk to us, do what you need to do. Uh this has been another episode of Who's on the Plane. I'm Taika Waititi, and I'm here with uh Give Lance's money. Go follow. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, five.